Hello and welcome to the Lone Star Varsity High School Football Show. I'm Phil Torino. There was a part, uh, I think actually the majority of the game with Abernathy and New Deal when I really felt the Antelopes had no chance competing moving forward in the district. It just seemed that as that 41-7 score result kept, to, kept mounting there, Abernathy couldn't really get anything going. New Deal looked outstanding and I was you know, concerned of what Abernathy's district record would look like when it's all said and done. But since then, I have to say, Abernathy has improved drastically. It's picked up two wins since that game and is looking exceptionally strong. That's what makes this game with Floyd Data Friday very, very compelling because you're talking about two teams that have come in with sort of similar score lines based on how they performed in early in district play. Floyd Data right now is looking excellent with its rushing attack with Corey Mathis in particular. He's a name that not a lot of people knew outside of Floyd Data, but he came onto the scene this year by being our player of the week with six touchdowns against the Hoka. When you pair that with what Kai Baker has been doing, he was a wide receiver and corner last year and seeing more time now at safety and quarterback, he has done a superb job too. I think Floyd Data will give Abernathy some fits, but this defensive front in particular for the Antelopes and what its linebacking core can do will sort of neutralize a bit of that, I think, with the whirlwinds. And that's definitely a compelling matchup because you're talking about ultimately deciding which of these two teams is going to finish in the number two spot there behind New Deal. If you look at how last year's playoffs panned out, Abernathy was in that number one spot and ended up um, a couple of rounds deep losing to Canadian. That's ultimately going to be the fate for whichever team happens to make it that far. But I think getting favorable matchups in the first couple of rounds, um, that'll be decided by how this district pans out a bit. Taking a look at Friendship and Coronado, I've been saying all week, I was on double T1043 earlier, and I mentioned that I feel Coronado is really due with the excellent you know, efforts it's put forth against Monterey and Friendship. Um, Monterey and Amarillo High, rather, excuse me. And I just felt like this team is really, really due. But it would be unwise to pick against Friendship right now. I think there's been consistency from the Tigers all year with the exception of the Tescosa loss. Getting Tristan Kennard back really, really, really helps. Um, having Hayden Harrison, the outstanding linebacker out with a turf toe, is kind of concerning, but I don't think it's a big enough loss to entirely doom the Friendship defense because it's, once again, a unit that has been very, very consistent this entire year. Another thing of note from last week was Loveland's run game getting going with Quallen Miller. I think Nick Gerber again being super consistent, getting over 400 yards. But having Miller, who's a really big back, working in consistently, I think is going to be huge for the Lobos moving forward. This is a team in two weeks' time that is going to have Pampa for what will be the district title game there. Estacado and Seminole have proven that you know, they're not really capable of finishing towards the top of this district this year. So I think Loveland, Pampa, it'll all boil down to that. Once again, the post defense has looked absolutely outstanding. It's three shutouts in a row right now. This team has allowed just 33 points all year. It's presently 8-0. That averages out to just a hair over four points per game for the post defense, which has been just absolutely absurd. And, you know, we've written a lot about the way the game is played now. We had a big piece on the emergence of, you know, new passing schemes from teams where we hadn't seen it before in our season preview. And yet, despite all of that, post has continued to dominate its district. It beat its bigger, biggest competitor, Coleman, early and since then has continued to roll. I think there's a very good chance that Post ends up here with a perfect record. Some of the big games this week, of course, Shallow Water Brownfield and Abilene Cooper versus Lubbock Cooper. We're definitely going to make picks for those, but for that, you're going to have to take a look at the Lone Star Varsity Minute. Thanks very much for watching. We appreciate it.